Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Time for another video. So today we'll be taking a look at Bitdefender Internet Security. This is of course the 2020 version. Not a lot has changed in terms of the general UI. The program does seem a bit more polished though and we'll start off by doing a quick update. Now, while that's happening, I'll walk you through the general product. I think the most interesting component here is advanced threat defense and the way it acts. This is, I guess, some kind of behavioral protection where it's analyzing the execution chain. Now, in the past, I've seen in tests that when I do my automated execution of malware, this is going to pick up on the processes that are actually launching the malware in the first place and terminate them. So essentially cutting off the attack vector. Now I'm starting to like this general UI. I kind of like the black and green a bit more, but it's still a really good UI in terms of usability and we've still got the autopilot. Now one of the things I really like about Bitdefender is the degree to which it can work automatically. Now of course, depending on your use case, that it might come with the disadvantage of having a few more false positives, but in general I found that just using autopilot recommendations, this is pretty much a set and forget product. Now just so you know, this is not a sponsored video. However, I will have links in the description as usual where you can get the product at the lowest price and also kind of support the the channel. But enough talk, it's time for testing. The product is up to date. Now I'm going to grab my malware. The goal here is to have at least 1500 samples. They're fairly new. I think I've done better than that this time. I've got over 1800. We're just going to disable the product for a few seconds just so I can drag my malware in. As you can see, we've got 1818 items, and this includes ransomware, PUPs, Trojans, all the usual stuff. Our folder is ready and looks like we're good to go. I'm just going to start PowerShell, and now we should be able to launch Malix. Now, if you're not aware, this is a script that I use to automate the testing process. All it does is go through these samples, execute it with a bit of a delay. Each of them is spawned as an individual process. So this is similar to, let's say, an attack factor where there's a compromised system or some kind of remote code execution vulnerability. So regardless of what some people might say, I think it's fairly realistic and fair. But of course, before we get started, we're going to re-enable the protection. Everything looks to be in order. So let the testing begin. I will start Task Manager and we'll prioritize... Uh, CPU usage so you can see what's going on during the test. And there you have it. Files are getting blocked, malware is getting bombarded. This is what we like to see. Let's get going. Woohoo, looks like the test is done. All 1817 files executed and we have a final proactive detection of 99.67%, which is really impressive. Now, initial impressions, I don't think anything actually executed successfully. So there was a PUP which wanted to download something that was like 500 megabytes and I tried to cancel the installer and it just canceled and went away. So technically that wouldn't really classify as adware or PUP. Now, other than that, we had a couple of things that tried to run but failed. And I think the reason for that is the malicious payload was blocked. Now, in terms of resource usage, I have a couple of interesting points here. So BD service host, this was at very high CPU usage the whole time. So the test ran very quickly, very smoothly as well. And we had high CPU usage from Bitdefender. So it seems like when it's detecting malware on the system, Bitdefender actually prioritizes itself, takes up as much CPU as is required and deals with it really fast. We've seen a lot of other solutions where the AV actually concedes resources to other applications. We've got CPU usage around like 20 to 30%, but the test is very slow. 
Personally, I prefer this approach over that, not just because it makes my tests faster and my life easier, but also because I think in a real malware scenario, that's kind of what you want. You want the AV to take up the resources, deal with the infection and get it over with. Now, of course, there are situations where that's not optimal. Let's say you're doing periodic scans, but I think in the event of a malware infection, this approach is more handy. But anyway, even though the system appears to be clean, I haven't noticed anything odd we will go ahead restart run ccleaner go through the usual process and i'll be back with some uh, second opinion scans all right our second opinion scans are done and the results are actually quite interesting surprisingly so first off i'm gonna look at hitman pro and obviously we've got this false positive but then we actually have a detection and this i believe is active and running at startup so we've got uh, Trojan Agent or App Generic and it's only 36 kilobytes. This is directly from the folder and it's now running on startup. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a miss. Now, if we look at Norton Power Razor, we've got the same detection. So this is a process, data is bad. It's very new with very few users. Funnily enough, it says it's not a startup item, but I'm quite sure it is. Now, it also detected a couple of other files. Now, I don't think these are legit detections because if we go ahead and take a look, I think these were the files that were partially blocked by Bitdefender. So if we run them, there's really nothing here. Now, Malwarebytes detected the same stuff. So we've got the same file in the folder. And then we've got the associated registry value. Now, interestingly, Malwarebytes classifies this as adware. And then it also goes ahead and detects a bunch of stuff in uh, program data, Bitdefender. So I'm guessing this is quarantine. So all of this is irrelevant. The only things we need to take a look at is the adware.do.generic. So there you have it. Those are the final results. Now, interpreting this is obviously going to be a challenge. Personally, I think this is still a pretty good result. We've got, at the end of the day, one miss. It's likely some adware component. But apart from that, the system is clean. Because of the startup item, I'm not going to call it a perfect clean sheet, but still a very solid result by Bitdefender, especially considering how many times I've tested it recently. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, if you'd like to purchase Bitdefender, you can get it at the lowest price using the link in the description. I'm looking forward to doing some more comparisons with this version of the product. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.